little more efficiently. And first thing is I'm going to do is I'm going to put my phone on mute. Uh, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Town of Berlin pre-town meeting. My name is Tom Badowski, and I'd like to share with you tips that can make this virtual meeting function well and ensure a pleasant experience for all. All attendees are asked to keep their microphones muted so as to keep down any distracting background noise. You can mute yourself by clicking on the microphone icon on the bottom left of your screen. Everybody find that? All right. You can also turn off your video by clicking the camera icon next to the microphone. This is helpful when a participant has poor internet connection and your voice will come over gar garbled if you're using both the video and the, and, the, and the microphone. So if you turn off your video, it may allow us to hear you better if you have poor internet connection. The, uh, there are two ways to ask questions. The first is through the chat button on the bottom middle of your screen. Click on that button uh, to ask a question. Vince Conti and Diane Isabel will monitor the chat and find answers for you. The second way to ask a question is to go to the bottom of your screen and click on the participants icon. Once in the participants, find your name and hover over it with your mouse and a more button will appear. Click that button and press raise your hand. This will alert me that you want to speak to the group. Again, this meeting is being recorded. And now I would like to that our moderator, uh, Paul Gillies, uh, have the, the floor. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Tom. Uh, welcome to the 230th annual Berlin Town Meeting. Uh, this is not a meeting where we will be doing any voting. This will be uh, purely for uh, discussion purposes. And uh, we traditionally begin with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, and I hope we'll see a flag we can pledge to. Do we have that? Here we go. Join with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. Of America. And to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, stand. under God, mm -hmm. with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Um, we are going to take the articles in order. And uh, as Tom explained, you can ask questions and we'll find answers for you. So the first article is the election of officers and the first of those is a select board member for a three-year term. It's been traditional that if you're a candidate that you might say a few words and introduce yourself. If any of those who will be candidates would like to speak, this is a good time. And uh, then we'll go on to the next. There's two select board members for a one-year term that will be on the ballot. Are there any of those candidates or any who want to be write-ins who are here to talk about that? Hey, Paul, Justin Lawrence, um, been on the select board for two years now. I'm really having a good time. There's a lot to learn um, and I look forward to hopefully contributing to the town for another year. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Anyone else? The third officer is for a town moderator for a one year term and I am the candidate. I am in my 21st year and uh, I enjoy doing it. And uh, anyone wants to start picking up after me, that's fine too. Let's start with, uh, let's go to article two. Shall the town appropriate 3 million $698,719 for necessary town expenses for the period July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. 
Um, someone from the select board to talk about this, perhaps? Yes, the, um, uh, the budget as it's presented is a 2% increase uh, from last year's. Uh, there are some uh, oddities to it and the fact that we used some of the undesignated funds or the surplus to buy down uh, debt for this uh, for this year uh, for the so we wouldn't have that uh, carrying over. Um, it shows up in the in the in uh, twenty twenty one budget or twenty two budget as a um, fourteen percent increase in spending, but it's uh, it's just a transfer of funds to this year's uh, to buy down the budget. Um, if there's any specific questions, please ask. Anyone? All right. Thanks, Brad. Uh, article three, this is the longest one we have. Shall the town collect its real and personal property taxes to defray the expenses of the town for the period July 1st, 2021? through June 30th, 2022 in installments. One fourth of the talk taxes to be due by delivery or by US Postal Service postmark, no private postal meter postmarks, on or before August 15th, 2021. One fourth of the taxes on or before November 15th, 2021. One fourth of the taxes due on or before February 15th, 2022 and more than fourth due on or before May 15th, 2022 within an 8% penalty and 1% interest per month or a portion thereof to be charged for late payment of any installment. This is a traditional article. I doubt if it's changed much from year to year, but are there questions or comments about article three? Okay. Article four, shall the voters authorize, <laughs> shall the, uh, voters authorize the Berlin Select Board to seek financing to pay for the replacement of a failed culvert on Fisher Road, payable from revenues derived from the Berlin General Fund tax revenues in an amount not to exceed $1,400,000, subject to reduction from the receipt of available state and federal grants in aid or use of undesignated funds over a period not to exceed 30 years. Uh, perhaps someone could start us with some background for this culvert. Well, yes, the, the background on this is uh, uh, the culvert on Fisher Road has had failed and they filled in and, and uh, repaved and uh, it failed again within, I think it was six months. Uh, we had it inspected. The bottom of the culvert is rotting out. Uh, we attempted to uh, have it sleeved with an aluminum tube. Uh, the culvert had collapsed enough so that it was no longer round, but oval, and we couldn't get the hydraulics to work with a sleeve. So that left us with uh, uh, pulling the culvert and changing it out. Um, when we looked at it and got a hold of uh, the state, they no longer wished to have a uh, um, solid bottom culvert. They wanted a natural stream flow. So what it ended up is we either, our choices came down to, to an arch culvert or with an open bottom or a uh, bridge. The bridge was restrictive in price. Um, the reason that the, the, the culvert or the arch is going to be so expensive is when the borings were done, get down to where there's any kind of a footing that would hold the weight, it was expensive. And this is where we are now. Um, any specific questions on this? I, I have a couple of questions. Um, sure. my name is Tony Snow. Um, 
I'm curious, is the town responsible for 100% of the replacement of this culvert or the uh, replacement of the repair? On this case, yes. I'm just curious, because I've worked in transportation for, for many years for the state of California before moving to Vermont. And a lot of times when you have a high volume road like that, where we're accessing CVMC, Walmart, the, the, the auto dealerships and stuff like that, they, there tends to be an expectation of, of partnerships with those organizations that are bringing in all that demand because it's not necessarily predominantly town residents that are using that road. Um, is there any opportunity for um, funds to come from elsewhere? Or is it is it really just falling solely on us? It's falling solely on us. Believe me, we. Uh, you can ask Tom. He's looked. Um, it uh, just uh, though there may be some expectation. There is no requirement. Anything else on that, Tom? I also wanted to point out real fast, it looks like there's several questions in the chat that maybe may not be caught. Uh, Tom? Uh, I'll answer the, 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 the question concerning the, the culvert, the cost of the culvert. Um, the select board has recently applied for a 1% uh, funding of that, and that, that's reflected in, uh, in the budgets on the go forward. Uh, so the um, we did pursue other avenues of of funding, V trans and such, and we were we were not eligible for that. Any other questions about the culvert issue? Well, we have had some in the chat that someone said that they could not raise their I hand. I would go back to, to yeah. the budget article for Polly Murtry, but there you go. ready to do that. Polly, it, it isn't too complicated just to step back one if you want to ask your question now about the budget. Well, I actually have a couple of questions, but my first one is the police budget seems incredibly high, and I know it has been since we moved to Berlin, and I just don't understand why a small town has one of the five highest police budgets in the state per capita. Um, I, I don't really understand what the police all do. And especially since the state police are gonna be moving just up the road from our town offices. And one of, the, one of the things that concerned me is, you know, I look at salaries, but nowhere did we see how many full-time, how many part-time police we have. Uh, can anyone answer Polly's question about the police department? Well, I think one of the things that's driving the police budget is the retail section of our uh, town um, the overall budget itself I don't think get it here um, has uh, not really increased that much on the police side um, the, uh, as far as the number of officers, uh, we are actually down a few now. And we try to make, and the, the chief tries to make up with um, uh, part timers. Um, I don't know, uh, what, was, what was the other part of your question? Well, um, this, uh, there was a, a different topic, but this, you know, we have like a 6% increase in our um, police budget and other towns are either pretty much level funded, maybe a few percent increase and some towns have a decrease in the police budget. So, I mean, that it just, it really, I know it's been high all along and it's really bothered me because there are other towns with, you know, strip malls and stuff and they don't seem to have this high a police budget. So that's, that's a concern. Um, I don't know if you can really answer it, but I may vote against the budget just for that reason. My other question had to do with the 
the town administrator salary, which was like a 12% increase and much higher than all the other, you know, town staff. And I was just wondering why that particular salary had a higher increase. After, uh, on, on the town administrator's budget, after going through VLTC and seeing what comparable towns were paying for an administrator, we ended up having to uh, offer more money to get somebody who was qualified to uh, uh, do the work, do the job. Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, the same is true with the police chief. Um, on the police side, of course, the, another thing with the increases in the, in the police budget is the, is the, uh, is the contract, that's, and that's coming up for a negotiation here uh, soon. Um, Hopefully we can take and work a deal there, or at least a, uh, have a um, uh, level funded uh, contract. I don't know how that'll work. Uh, you never do until you get into it. Uh, any other questions on that? Um, no, no, that, that explains it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so, Mike, so right, or, can I pop in for just a second? Perhaps? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, I, I'm not in, associated with the police in any way, but I've asked the same question that Polly has before. And so the, the, the answer that I have gotten in the past was that um, we have a very high per capita police force uh, cost because our per capita, you know, of, of residents is fairly low at something like 2,500 or 3,000 people. But during the day, because of the amount of industry and the hospital and the shopping and, you know, Blue Cross and all that, our, our per capita rises to something like 40,000 people during the day. Um, and that's the primary reason that we have the, the size of the force that we have is to deal with that well. huge increase of daily population, not residents. Interesting. Okay, thank you, Mike. Anything else on the budget or we'll go to article five now. Shall the town grant a continuation of the municipal property tax exemption pursuant to 32 VSA section 3840 for the period of one year to the Capital City Grange number 469 for property located at 6612 Vermont Route 12 in exchange for free use of the property by residents a minimum of two times a month. Is there someone from the Grange that will speak to this? Yes, I am here. Uh, I'm Tim Swartz. I'm the president of the Capital City Grange. Um, as many of you probably know, uh, the Grange was granted exemption from property taxes by the Berlin Town Meeting back in 2016. Uh, and that has been a huge aid in keeping us solvent since then. We're an all volunteer nonprofit organization and the cash flow that we have comes from renting out our hall to community groups, individuals and families from uh, from Berlin, but also uh, all of central Vermont, basically. Um, and over the years, it's been a struggle to, you know, keep keep going. Um, the Berlin property tax was one of our largest bills on an annual basis. Uh, since being voted the tax exemption in 2016, we have been uh, giving free use to Berlin residents and Berlin organizations. And uh, we have done that well up until the pandemic. <laughs> we were uh, over the, the two times per month that we had promised. Um, we keep, we've kept trying to publicize that. Obviously, since March of last year, we've had essentially no use of the hall by anybody. So uh, the Berlin uses have been very, very minimal. Um, the select board asked us to limit the request for one year so that we could have a larger discussion in an in-person town meeting next year, which seems very reasonable to us. And we hope that the town will vote for the article as it stands, and then we'll have a, a more in-person and vigorous discussion next year, I expect, about a longer continuation. And, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that people have about the Grange or about this arrangement. Anyone? I just asked a, a quick question. I, I think this is pretty great. I'm just curious. Um, what what's the uh, what do the numbers look like as far as the amount of times you guys have rented it out for free and what it would have cost for other folks to rent it 
versus the the cost for the taxes on the Grange? Uh, I don't have a number for that, I'm afraid. Um, our rental rates, uh, we try to keep affordable and you know we have to be competitive with other venues, uh, which include a lot of places that are tax exempt like churches and things like that, exempt the property taxes. I mean, we're a nonprofit organization, but uh, we're not uh, a 501c3. Uh, so I don't know the exact number for that, I'm afraid. Um, we think we're, we're a benefit in general, be, in addition to the uses that we give to Berlin, uh, you know, renters. Free uses, we like to call it. Free rentals is a confusing term. Anything else on this article? Um, I've been reminded that it would make sense if you, even though your name often appears, that you give your name before you give a comment if you're unless of course you're in a continuing dialogue. So now article six, shall the town authorize cannabis retailers and integrated licensees in town pursuant to seven VSA section 863. Someone to speak to this? That article was um, uh, put, on, put in here uh, by the Angelina, and I think she's here, so she should be able to speak to it. Yep, it was requested by one of our Berlin residents um, for us to put it on the ballot. So I just followed through with that. Okay, anybody else comments on Article 7? Cannabis retailing. Um, I this is Polly McMurtry, and I, I, I've sort of thought long and hard about this, but, and um, talked to several people, and somebody made the point that, you know, we sell alcohol in the town, and this is just, you know, another form of, you know, a drug that people like to use to relax, so, um, I personally don't see a problem with it, but I know a lot of people are concerned that, that you know, this will lead to drug abuse, but I don't think that's, you know, that's going to happen any more than it already does. People are already smoking. So, Mr. Gillis, this is Vince Conti, um, town administrator. I'd just like to add a little bit of information um, for the residents on this as well. Um, there was an article in the paper last Wednesday, uh, I believe it was last week Wednesday, um, around uh, Waterbury as well. But I think it's something that if people want more information on uh, to, fi to find, they can research it a little bit. But it's, it's based on uh, an act passed, Act 164 by the state legislature back in October, um, which was just creating a framework for legalizing and regulating the sale of recreational cannabis statewide. Um, so in order to do this, um, the law requires individual towns and or cities to opt in by a public vote to determine if they want to allow the sale and production of cannabis in their community. So again, that's just, it's just information for everyone, um, somewhere they can go to look up further the law around that. And also to point out that the retail sales will be taxed by the state and the town will not get any portion of that tax as well. And that's all information that's out there for people um, if they want to look at that and get more detail. Good. Any other comments or questions on Article 7? Then Article 8. Oh, that's, that was 6. That, 7. Shall the town appropriate $285,079 to the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department for payment of necessary expenses from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. Is someone from the fire department here to speak? Good morning, Paul. This is uh, John Staub for the Berlin Fire Department. Um, I guess what I'd like to start by saying is, is shortly after last year's town meeting, 
and, and the COVID-19 epidemic kind of came into play. Um, I'm gonna say that the Berlin Fire Department really looked long and hard at, at the budget and was unsure of the economic uh, outcome for our community. And, and so we were ready, we were already working on decreasing where we could. Um, there was a, a few things that uh, came into play, which we were able to, to address and, and use some savings. And, and one is uh, the unfortunate um, number of volunteers is not what it used to be. So we could actually, uh, we had a savings and some gear, which was actually somewhere around the $3,000 we were able to uh, decrease our budget by. And uh, then the need to replace a fire truck, um, we were talking at the last town meeting about, um, came about. And in the purchase of that fire department, uh, the fire truck, we also were able to pay off a, a loan, which gave us, um, you know, uh, quite a large savings uh, to the budget, the overall budget. So this year's budget is coming in about 8.3% less than last year for expenses. Good. Any questions for the fire department? I have a question, Paul. Well, it's not really a question, a comment. I, I was very pleased to see this year that you have provided us with a very detailed budget uh, comparing to last year. And I just want to commend you on that. Thank you. You're welcome. I should have uh, at some point asked if no one, anyone would object if non-residents speak and uh, I've fallen short on that, but uh, it's you're, with your permission, anyone who has a, isn't a resident could speak. And I'd ask that if you are a non-resident that you include that in your introduction as to who you are. Article eight, shall the town appropriate $30,402 to the Kellogg Hubbard Library? Anyone? Yes. Hi, I, I'm Dan Green. I'm the um, trustee of the Kellogg Hubbard Library representing the town of Berlin. Um, as you can well imagine, this year has been a challenging time um, with COVID to serve the library patrons. And the Kellogg Hubbard Library has really done an exemplary job serving our folks. Carolyn, Carolyn Brennan is in attendance right now. Um, she's the co-director and she's here to give us more information about the library's request. Carolyn? Hi, um, I am not a resident of the town of Berlin. I live in Montpelier, um, but I am one of two co-directors at the library. And I wanted to say that, um, you know, currently, well, actually I should start by, by thanking everybody for um, now a, a number of years of support from the town of Berlin. We really appreciate it. Uh, this year for, I think the fourth year in a row, we are requesting level funding from Berlin. Um, we have a collection of over 70,000 physical materials and 80,000 digital downloadable materials. Uh, in 2020, for libraries across the state and beyond, there has been a, a big emphasis on increasing digital access for patrons. Uh, and so we have two new services that I want to make sure everybody knows about. Uh, one of those is Canopy, which is a streaming video service that you can access through our website if you have a library card. Uh, and which was much requested in the years prior to this year. And it's just, ex it's expensive. So we hadn't added it previously. Uh, and the other one is called Flipster, and that is a magazine, a downloadable magazine service. And um, so I encourage everybody to check those out. Uh, you can also ch ha -ha, check those out, sorry. Um, and uh, and uh, oh, so the town of Berlin pays less than $11 per capita for the, uh, as the cost for the library. And I wanted to mention that that is about a third of the state average per capita support for libraries. Uh, so it is, um, I know $30,000 is a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, I, I do feel that the town of Berlin is getting a pretty good deal for library services. And the Kellogg Hubbard is, I've worked at a number of libraries around Vermont, and uh, the Kellogg Hubbard is really one of, one of the best. And I am happy to answer any questions anybody might have. Anyone? Questions on the library? 
Thank you. Thank you. Article nine, shall the town appropriate $15,000 to the Montpelier Senior Activity Center? Anyone from the Senior Center here? Yes. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Jana Claire, and I am not a resident of Berlin. I live in Montpelier. Um, I serve as the director at Montpelier Senior Activity Center. And we've been grateful for the support of uh, Town of Berlin voters for quite a few years now. Um, we are seeking level funding again this year. And um, I'll just share a little bit about how we've been operating in the past year during the pandemic. Um, as most of you can probably guess, we've had to close our doors to the public for group gatherings, but we are maintaining a few one-on-one -on -one, um, essential services, including foot care clinics in partnership with Central Vermont Council on Aging. And um, right now we're doing low contact tax preparation at no cost in, in partnership with AARP. We've also maintained our um, Meals on Wheels and my colleague Sarah is gonna say a few uh, more words about that in just a moment. We've pivoted to instead, instead of having inside group meals, we've also um, started curbside to go meals twice a week. We've added an aging in place coordinator this year. Um, through the AmeriCorps program. And through that are able to provide a lot of technology training to area residents. And um, we've pivoted to uh, change our typically about six uh, dozen weekly classes to online instead of in person. We're doing fewer classes, but most of our classes are open to adults of all ages. Um, we do primarily serve residents um, in the surrounding area 50 and up, but we're really um, emphasizing intergenerational activities in our programming. We continue to do presentations, partner with community organizations. We, um, we are really pleased to provide Meals on Wheels to residents of your town, some of your most vulnerable. Um, and I'm gonna let Sarah say a few more words about the FEAST program. She's here with me, Sarah Lipton, our FEAST program manager. Hi, good morning. I am also not a resident of Berlin. I live in Calais. Um, I'm loving serving the Feast Senior Meals Program, which MSAC organized a while back, and which I really am happy to clarify for you, offers Meals on Wheels and Feast Curbside Meal Pickup on Tuesdays and Fridays, and someday we'll go back to eating together again. But last year, we served 2,800 meals um, to seniors in Berlin through our Meals on Wheels program. And anyone is able to access that by calling us. It's at no charge to anyone over the age of 60. Um, there were some more restrictions pre-pandemic, but that relaxed a little bit um, just to make sure people are getting what they need. We also offer wellness calls and check-ins and packages with you know, information and resources. And we try to bring more than just meals, which are delicious and nutritious. We try to bring more engagement as well to our seniors at home. So we are right around the corner, pick up a call. Anyone you know that needs our services, we are here. And I'll just add that we served at least 47 residents of Berlin in the past year, um, despite the pandemic. And um, one last point I'll make is that we have some vacancies coming up on our advisory council. And we would love to have a resident of Berlin um, join that group uh, to help advise our staff on our operations. So if anyone is interested or you know anyone that might be interested, please put them in touch with us. We've got a deadline of nominations for March 31st. If Thank there's you. any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Any questions for the senior center? I. This is Polly McMurtry. I don't have a question, but I just want to echo how wonderful the Senior Center has been. I know a number of us older folks in Berlin have, you know, taken part in some of the activities there. And I've been thankful that they have been able to continue a lot of the classes on Zoom. So I don't feel so unconnected to the others that were in my class. It's a very worthy organization. Thank you. Anything else for the Senior Center? We'll go on then. It's, Thank you for your time. Um, thanks. Article 10, shall the town appropriate $10,920 to the Green Mountain Transit? Is, uh, 
is there, is there anyone to speak to that? Uh, no? Okay. Uh, Article 11, shall the town appropriate $10,000? I'm sorry? Can I ask a quick question? Sure. What What exactly does that money do for Green Mountain Transit? Is that is that for providing services? Is it providing a bus stop? What exactly does that do? Well, if we get someone that knew the answer to that, it would be helpful. Um, it may be that the uh, article in the town report would give you an answer to that. Uh, there's a, a series of reports there that you could look at, but anyone know the answer to that question? Yes, yeah, go ahead, Tom, please. It's to help with our general operating expenses. It's a, it's a, a common line item in the town of Berlin and for many communities in central Vermont, which uh, the folks provide bus service in. Okay, anything else, Anthony? No? Okay, uh, we'll go on to Article 11. Should the town appropriate $10,000 to the Berlin Corner Cemetery Association, cemetery not town owned? Anyone have anything about that? Hi, I'm Jeff Mugford, president of the Berlin Corner Cemetery. And the BCC is the only active cemetery in Berlin and is managed by an association. The BCC is not a town owned cemetery and the cost of upkeep and labor has made the cemetery unsustainable. Um, with, with the help of the Berlin residents uh, last year, we were able to put in water and power into the cemetery, which has really helped things out a lot. Um, we also give Berlin residents a discount on lots, and that's about it for me. <laughs> okay. uh, any questions for Jeff or comments on the Berlin Corner Cemetery itself? Article 12, shall the town appropriate $6,450 to the Central Vermont Home Health and hospice. Paul, I'd like to speak on that, if I may. Um, I'm Pat McDonald. I'm a resident of Berlin, and I've spoken to the pre-town meeting for many years about Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice. I've been on the board and recently serve on um, several committees. I just wanted to focus not only on their services, which include home care, hospice care, maternal child health care, and long-term care, but all the work that they've been doing uh, to step up in the pandemic. Can you hear me? Should I go off mute? I mean, off. Bye, everybody. I'm going to do that. Okay. So, um, the, the during the pandemic, um, they have had multiple free public flu uh, vaccines to homeless at area motels. They've delivered over 3,000 prepaid uh, meals via the Vermont Everyone Eats program, which has been a godsend to this area. They have administered the COVID swab tests for patients and residents of assisted living facilities and um, have just reached out to our community to help them in, in many different ways, starting um, having them use telemedicine um, uh, just to make sure that we're in constant contact with our, with our patients. In Berlin, the number of patients that have been seen by CVHHH is 133. Total visits, 4,406. Home care visits, 2,700. Hospital visits, 303. Long-term care, 1,309. And maternal child health, 94. I can tell you that on a personal basis and a professional basis, this is an amazing organization. Everyone in my family, uh, except me, I guess I should say, fortunately, um, they have all used their services after surgeries and, and illnesses. Um, they are just a wonderful organization and we really thank you uh, for your support 
80% uh, of uh, their operating revenue comes from Medicare and Medicaid, and they set the reimbursement rates. And over the last 10 years, Medicare has decreased the numbers of dollars that they provide. And so um, the, the money that we ask from towns really makes up the difference in um, what, what we have as a budget. And so we really thank you all for your um, continued support. Thanks, any questions I'd be glad to answer. Anyone questions for Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice? Article 13, shall the town appropriate $2,000 to Washington County Mental Health? Is anyone here to speak to that? Uh, yes, hi, I'm uh, John Caceres from Washington County Mental Health. Um, I, uh, I run the uh, marketing communications and development and I uh, just wanna thank you all for the opportunity to uh, provide insight on why we can use uh, Berlin's funding support. Um, as many of you may know, we've been, uh, we're, we're a non private nonprofit organization that has provided services to communities in Washington County since 1967. We provide mental health developmental services, substance use supports to adults and children and their families. Uh, WCMHS provides services to people in schools homes and our office locations, which are primarily located throughout Barry, uh, Montpelier and Berlin. And we also provide 24 hour emergency services working with first responders, EMTs, uh, law enforcement, and of course the team at CVMC. 93% um, of our funding is uh, by state Medicaid and uh, we provide about one to $2 million um, uh, per year of uh, free care. Um, and we also respond to schools who have serious events and have done this in Berlin on multiple occasions throughout the years uh, for our charge. Um, as we uh, take this as a, uh, as, a, as a pretty primary mission as a community mental health provider. Uh, we also did this following Tropical Storm Irene going door to door. Uh, the message uh, we like to give is that we are there for the community and if Berlin needs us, uh, whether for individuals, law enforcement or groups, we'll come. Uh, we take this on as a mission and greatly appreciate the support. Uh, with all that said, WCMHS is seeking additional funding or funding in, the, uh, in order to provide the care needed to our communities throughout Washington County, and in particular Berlin. Uh, we are very grateful for the 2000 granted in past years. Um, this past year in fiscal 2020, uh, we've provided uh, 6,739 6, individuals with over 336,000 individual units of service and that's throughout the county. Um, in uh, fiscal year 2020, uh, we've provided uh, 5,971 units of service, which totaled 14,043 hours of service to 121 Berlin residents. Um, those numbers are increasing dramatically, as you can imagine. Um, I may have seen uh, on CAX earlier this week uh, that the surge that we're seeing as a result of the COVID pandemic has uh, put some incredible pressures on our, on our system and, and on the folks in, in uh, throughout Washington County and of course the state. Um, in terms of detail you know, support uh, for case management, our total units were uh, 1,611 for a total of uh, just under 900 hours. Clinical services, uh, total units were 940. Uh, total hours of uh, 605 community support, uh, 2,900 for 9,900 um, hours. Uh, consultation and educational services, uh, just seven hours. Um, crisis, 27 hours, uh, sorry, 27 units at 21 hours, and, uh, and I can go on. Um, we're requesting, as I mentioned, $2,000 in order to help continue our work. Uh, we, provide, we provide services to our communities that are beyond our standard services and therefore not funded or underfunded. Um, the gap between the 93% uh, Medicaid funding um, is significant, as you all can imagine. Um, in addition, we offer mental health uh, first aid classes throughout Washington County free of charge. Um, and this helps to build awareness and understanding about how to help someone who may be in mental health crisis or at risk in developing uh, more serious challenges. And we can continue to offer many programs that are not fully funded. And the support from Berlin is very important in helping us continue to do this. Uh, again, um, the impact of, uh, of, uh, of COVID has had a, a tremendous uh, effect on us and, um, and our system. Um, we 
as you may, again, as you may have seen or heard on a WCX earlier this week, we have a wait list of about 100 people, uh, which translates to about 10 to 12 weeks of service, um, or wait rather. And we've been pretty innovative in incorporating um, group therapy and things like that to get people in the door just to give the support that they need. And we're actually um, going to be providing some self-help messaging um, in the coming weeks. Actually, we plan on starting that this week, again, just to help support people um, that are really struggling given the pandemic. Um, anyway, I just wanted to um, say thank you and appreciate your consideration at this year's town meeting. And uh, we look forward to continuing to be of service to the folks of uh, Washington County and in particular Berlin. Thank you. Thank you, John. Any questions on uh, Washington County mental health? Article 14, shall the town appropriate $1,200 to the Central Vermont Adult Basic Education? Anyone to speak to that? No, then we'll go on to 15. <clears throat> Shell of the town appropriate $1,000 to the Vermont Center for Independent Living. Anyone to talk about that subject? Article 16, shall the town appropriate $1,000 to the Central Vermont Memorial Civic Center? Anyone? Questions, comments, support? Article 17, shall the town appropriate $975 to circle? Uh, just jump right in if you have a comment or question. Article 18, shall the town appropriate $800 to the Family Center of Washington County? Article 19, shall the town appropriate $800 to prevent child abuse Vermont? Article 20, shall the town appropriate $700 to capstone community action? Hi, I'm here to speak for capstone community action. Uh, my name is Allison Calderera. I'm the Chief of Programs and Advancement for Capstone, and I am not a Berlin resident. Uh, Capstone Community Action is a community action agency uh, that serves Washington, Lamoille, and Orange counties. Uh, our mission is to lift people out of poverty and to create economic opportunities for adults and families. Uh, we provide a wide range of services uh, crisis services for utilities. We provide early childhood education, adult education to achieve your high school diploma. Uh, we weatherize homes. Uh, we, we have a food shelf uh, where participants come and get boxes of food. And we've also this year with the pandemic um, very much changed our whole systems of delivery. Um, I can speak to that uh, personally, I joined, I joined Capstone right the week the COVID pandemic closed everything down. And I have never seen such an effort by an organization to be able to try to provide the services when there were so many isolated people that couldn't get out of their homes and people that were economically impacted. Uh, last summer, we produced 25,000 meals for people who were um, living in the motels and also at other different sites throughout the city. And, and I will say that um, the other piece is that um, we were, I was so delighted to hear uh, Everyone Eats mentioned because we, last fall, we became the regional hub for Everyone Eats. And if you're not familiar with that program, it distributes meals to community residents and it is also a partnership, an economic partnership with restaurants and with the local farmers. So everyone wins. We're supporting our restaurants, we're supporting hungry Vermonters and we're supporting local food producers. Uh, the entire program and, and across the state has actually delivered back $800,000 into the community and economic support. 
Right now, Everyone Eats is delivering four to 5,000 meals uh, in our service area. I wish I could tell you how many uh, Berlin residents were getting those meals, but as we heard with Vermont Hos the Health and Hospice, we are supplying meals there as well. So I'm sure it's a good, it's a good amount. Last year, we served 113 Berlin households, and that was 256 individuals. Uh, 127 Berlin individuals accessed meals or, or meal equivalents at the food shelf. 25 Berlin households were able to keep heating their homes with access to crisis and supplemental fuel. Uh, four households need, needed and received emergency furnace repairs, and we also completely replaced a furnace for a Berlin, Berlin resident. Uh, one of the things that we've also found uh, is the new oil tank uh, repair that's our, that is necessary because of the Vermont law that came into play last July. We've been spending much time helping people uh, make sure that their fuel tanks are inspected and safe. We also had served a homeless family that lived in Berlin, and I'm proud to provo I'm proud to report that they are now successfully housed. We have three children in early Head Start and uh, Head Start programs, which is our early childhood education program for the kids and for their families. And these are uh, at-risk, low-income families. And during the pandemic, we completely supported our families remotely. Plus we also fed each and every member of the family with food deliveries to make sure that the kids and all their family members had access to good healthy food. We weatherized six houses in Berlin, uh, six to seniors and two to residents with disabilities so they can stay warm and have energy efficient homes. We counseled, we provided financial counseling and coaching to eight of your residents. We also counseled five budding entrepreneurs with business counseling, who folks that wanted to start a business. 20 residents uh, had their taxes prepared at no charge through our tax assistant program, which is completely driven by volunteers. And we had one proud graduate from the Community Kitchen Academy, which uh, launches folks with culinary skills uh, into the job market. This has been just a quite a year for the record books. I don't need to say that. I think everyone else has, has said that as well. We are so grateful for the support for basic needs that we receive from, from the town of Berlin. Uh, it, simply, we keep people warm fed, housed, and we help them get on with their lives in a positive and secure way. So thank you very much. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? Thank you again. Mm -hmm. Article 21, shall the town appropriate $600 to the Good Samaritan Haven? Anyone to speak on that article? Yes, hi. Um, my name is uh, Craig Peltier. I'm on the board of the Good Samaritan Haven. Um, thank you for entertaining our request. Uh, I live in the town of, uh, I lived in Cowles for a long time, but I currently live in Montpelier, not a Berlin resident. Uh, as many of you probably know, um, we're the primary shelter for Central Vermont for over 30 years. The Good Samaritan Haven has provided emergency shelter and support services for adults experiencing homelessness in our community. Uh, as has been previously said, and we all know the COVID-19 pandemic has increased the level of homelessness and greatly challenged our work this year. Um, this winter, we're providing shelter and support services to over 300 individuals in motels, shelters, and on the streets. Uh, this includes the Hilltop in Berlin, with the help of many partners, including the Berlin police and many others, we have continued to provide essentials while keeping our guests, our staff and our community safe. Um, area town funding is important to the Good Samaritan Haven. We typically get funding from uh, 10 towns in Washington County uh, each program year. Um, 
this funding contributes to the cost of our facilities, food, and clothing. And we're very, very grateful to the town of Berlin for supporting us in the past. And uh, hopefully, we're hopeful you will continue to do so this year. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Craig. Any questions on the uh, Haven? If not, Article 22, shall the town appropriate $500 to the People's Health and Wellness Clinic? Anyone to speak to that? Article 23, shall the town appropriate $500 to the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired? Someone to speak to that? Article 24, shall the town appropriate $500 to the Washington County Youth Services Bureau? Anyone comments? Article 28, shall the town appropriate $500 to Mosaic Vermont, formerly the Sexual Assault Crisis Team of Washington County? Hi, I'm Ann Ward. I am a resident of Berlin and I'm the executive director of Mosaic Vermont. Most of you know us as Sexual Assault Crisis Team of Washington County. We changed our name in April of 2020, right in the height of the um, the beginning of the pandemic crisis and um, we stayed as open and available as possible throughout. We provide services um, both in acute incidents of uh, sexual violence as well as long-term um, supporting folks for whom maybe child sexual abuse or, or former um, experiences of sexual violence impact them later in, lives in a, later in their life in a variety of different ways. And we have a shelter in Barrie that needed to pivot pretty hard in this past year. We provide congregate care to people fleeing, people who are homeless due to fleeing sexual violence. And in a lot of, in most cases that involves um, some element of sex trafficking, which is um, pretty prevalent throughout our area. And this year we, we had to move from congregate care to, to separate facilities and then work to support the, um, the real need for, for love, connection, and belonging that people experiencing this kind of violence and, um, and homelessness need without, without the support of being able to be together and um, share meals and, and uh, do that kind of healing work together. We also maintained our presence in a number of Washington County schools, um, our school programs throughout the year. Um, much of our work, of course, switched to virtual. Uh, but we serve hundreds of people a year throughout Washington County who, um, who have these experiences and are otherwise, um, are otherwise not, not very public or, um, you know, it's not, a, it's not uh, widely known how much sexual violence is experienced throughout our area. Um, so we are incredibly grateful for the support of towns and um, our ability to, our ability to exist and, and provide this service. Um, for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Any questions for Anne? Uh, Article 26, shall the town appropriate $500 to Community Harvest of Central Vermont? Hello, I'm here to speak on behalf of Community Harvest. Can everyone hear me okay? <laughs> um, I'm Allison Levin, the executive director of Community Harvest of Central Vermont, and I am a Berlin resident. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with our work, I wanted uh, to just uh, give a little bit of information. Um, we bring the community together through gleaning to recover surplus produce from area farms to feed those with limited access to fresh local food. Um, and in the process, help the community gain a greater awareness and appreciation for the local food system, healthy eating and waste reduction. Uh, community Harvest of Central Vermont is a 501c3 nonprofit based here in Berlin. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, we, we've, we've been a little bit busy this last year. Um, we work with two to 400 volunteers each season and we actually work with more individuals this year than ever before. Um, very creatively but, and safely, but we were able to do that. 
Um, they help us recover nutri nutritious food um, to feed all of our neighbors that may not have access to it. Um, we glean um, food that has been grown by local farms that cannot be sold by them and would otherwise go to waste. Um, I founded the organization in 2014, and since then we have donated more than a million servings of food um, through our partners at Food Shelves, Senior Meal Programs, Early Childhood and After School Programs and other organizations feeding members, um, community members in need here in Washington County. Um, this last year has been very, very busy for us. Uh, since the pandemic started, um, we increased um, substantially the work that we've been doing. Um, and even now in the middle of winter, we send three and four car loads of food out to our partners every week, um, including a lot of the federal food that has been um, sent along. We've been helping, helping get those boxes out to those who need it um, at our partner sites. Um, so originally we were a, a very seasonal organization and we're certainly now fully year round, um, all season long, um, making sure that people have the access to the food they need. Um, we serve about 11,200 individuals overall that receive the food that we glean. Um, and in 2020, um, we more than doubled the amount that we donated to the community over the amount that we sent out in 2019. Um, so we now serve about 30 organizations um, just here in Washington County, including um, organizations like Capstone and Feast that you heard from earlier. Um, and this last year, we donated 138,000 pounds of food, um, of nutritious food from local producers um, and, and some other food that we collected as well. So that's 38,000 pounds of food just in 2020. Um, Community Harvest has provided glean food to Berlin residents for the last seven years since we started. Um, and through our partnerships with, as I said, food shelves, senior meal programs, Meals on Wheels, um, like Feast and others um, that are in all the surrounding towns around Berlin. We also partner with the Berlin Elementary School and their Farm to School program um, to have, provide students hands-on opportunities to glean, eat, and learn about fresh produce and healthy eating. Um, this last fall, we had to skip taking students out into the fields with us, but we continued to send vegetables into the classrooms to help them learn about fresh food grown on local farms. We also partnered with two Berlin farms, uh, Dog River Farm and Rogers Farmstead, um, to recover surplus produce and, and crops that they um, produced um, to make sure that they did not go to waste and they were able to share those with the community. Um, we are asking um, for a small amount of funding from all the towns that we serve to cover a small portion of the costs of coordinating and the recovery and distribution of all the food that we glean with the help of hundreds of volunteers each season. Um, we ask for support again this year, um, the same amount that we've asked in the past um, as we work to continue um, and ex the ex to meet the expanding need um, here in the community. And we know it's Certainly, certainly not over yet. There's a long, a long way to go to get back to where we were, which was certainly um, a lot of need before this all started. So um, happy to answer any questions that anyone might have um, about our work. Thank you, Alice. Allison. Anyone? Questions? Uh, Article 27, shall the town appropriate $300 to the good beginnings of central Vermont? Is there anyone to speak for that? Yes, I'm here, Gretchen Elias. I am not a Berlin resident. Um, I am a resident of Montpelier. Can folks hear me? Yes, okay. great. Um, so I am the executive director of Good Beginnings of Central Vermont. Uh, our mission is to bring community to families and their babies. We were formed in 1991 by a Northfield mother and have served all of Washington County, including Berlin for the bulk of that time. I believe we've been on the ballot in Berlin for the last three or possibly four years. Uh, we're asking level funding this year of $300. And uh, we do serve um, anyone who is caring for or expecting a baby with a variety of free services with an emphasis on the mental health and social support of the caregiver. Um, so obviously the last year has been a challenging one for us because th those who are caring for a new baby were even more isolated, but our options for providing the kind of hands-on support that we are used to providing uh, were definitely much more limited and tricky. 
uh, we did pivot to a range of uh, virtual options for nearly all our programs. Our flagship program is when we match a family with a volunteer and our volunteers are now providing phone and Zoom support. And in uh, certain cases, we have been able to provide in-home support when it's been safe to do so and when the family has been um, really in need uh, for a mental health or other reason. And we've also been partnering with a lot of the other programs who uh, have spoken today uh, in order to provide uh, food through Everybody Eats and um, uh, partner, we've partnered a lot with uh, home health and hospice to deliver supplies and baby carriers to families due to a lot of door drop offs and uh, groceries and baby supplies. So a lot of collaboration in new ways with other organizations in order to make sure families get what they need. Uh, um, our groups that we provide for new parents are primarily happening online. Um, and we've had great attendance with those. And we've seen a lot of um, increase in need for our early parenting workshops and parent education. We think that a lot of families who used to rely on grandparents or friends for that kind of um, hands-on knowledge are turning to us instead because of the, the pandemic. So we're doing a lot of Zoom tutorials on basic infant skills. Uh, we served 14 households in Berlin this past year. A number of them did attend our in-person events before the shutdown. Uh, we've also provided uh, something around 30 hours of um, individualized support to two Berlin families through a postpartum angel. Uh, we have one um, rock star volunteer who is a Berlin resident, and we're very grateful for her, and we would love to have more volunteers uh, from Berlin. If anyone is interested, reach out. Um, and we're really grateful for our for the support that we've received from Berlin in the past. It's a small amount, but all told, the requests we make from area towns that we serve end up being about 10% of our overall budget and a, and a really important part of our financial stability. So I'm happy to ask, answer any questions. Any questions for Gretchen? Thank you. Uh, that comes to the end of the uh, listed articles in our warning, but traditionally we have an extra one, and I think we can intuit that it exists there for other business, and that would be, this would be a time where anyone could speak about anything at all, and uh, if there are people or things that to be said now, this is a good time to do it. Is there anyone interested in other business? Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. And uh, although you have a little function on a hand up, you could just put your hand up in the air perhaps, but uh, all in favor of, uh, first of all, will someone move to adjourn? So move. So move. Second. Second, good. All in favor of adjourning the 230th annual Berlin Town Meeting until Tuesday. <laughs> Say aye. Or aye. 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 Thanks for all the organizations and all of those who attended. It was uh, inspiring this year. And thank you very much. Remember to vote on Tuesday if you haven't already.